kind of words. I don't think I deserve all that. Thank you so much. Sab ko bahut mubarak. Ki yahan pe itni achhi, especially ye jo aapke organizers hain, principal, vice principal to collect galaxy of stars of the field of surgery, medicine, gynae, and all other specialities, neurosurgery or orthopedics. And sorry if I forget something. बहुत मुबारक है इतना अच्छा आप लोगों ने सारा अरेंज किया हो गया है एंड वाज द अपॉर्चुनिटी टू कम एंड इंटरेक्ट विद ऑल ऑफ यू हियर एक्चुअली आई बिलोंग टू द क्लास ऑफ दिस हुआ रियली सीइंग द एवोल्यूशन इन एनेस्थीजिया स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम डब्बा एनेस्थीजिया टू द लेटेस्ट मशीन एंड ड्रग्स एंड एवरी थिंग नॉट ओनली इन पाकिस्तान बट एट इंटरनेशनल एंड डेवलप कंट्रीज ऑल्सो Thank you for giving me the opportunity. I'll just talk briefly about multimodal approach in modern anesthesia. Introduction of uh, this multimodal is that multimodal general anesthesia is predicted on the idea that using combination of agents makes it possible to use less of each drug and thereby achieve more of the desired effects and fewer of the undesired side effects. My plan of the presentation is that we'll talk about multimodal general anesthesia, analgesia, perioperative multimodal anesthesia using regional techniques in the aging surgical patients, Therapies for post-operative nausea vomiting, approach to improve surgical outcome, and intervention for early discharge from ICU. Multimodal health approaches focus on identifying individuals at risk, lifestyle changes, behavioral change, and stress reduction that use a range of holistic and systematic medical approaches. Therapy that combines more than one method of treatment. Also called combination therapy and multimodality therapy. The multiple modes used may include pharmacotherapy, devices, and behavioral or psychosocial intervention. There are four main categories of anesthesia, and during surgery and other procedures, we use general anesthesia, regional anesthesia, sedation, which is also known as multi, as monitored anesthesia care, and local anesthesia. Multimodal therapies are intended to optimize treatment by delivering different type of therapies together. In general anesthesia, it's a drug-induced reversible state of the reversible state consisting of unconsciousness, amnesia, antinociception, and immobility while maintaining physiological stability. The primary objective of general anesthesia is to eliminate pain during surgery and invasive diagnostic procedures. The state of general anesthesia eliminates pain by preventing both nociception, which is the transmission of noxious neural sensory stimuli, and conscious perception of nociception. Multimodal general anesthesia is a strategy for leveraging known central and peripheral neurophysiology to control levels of unconsciousness and anti-nociception during anesthetic practice. Uses this uh, MMMGA uses a combination of multiple agents with specific central nervous system targets at low doses to maximize anti-nociceptive and selective effects while minimizing the potential side effects of each agent. The current practice of balanced anesthesia typically uses opioids for antinociception, 
intravenous propofol to induce and inhaled ethers to sustain unconsciousness and produce amnesia and the muscle relaxation is produced with the help of muscle relaxers to produce immobility. So this is the table which is showing the effect of all these nociception, arousal, hemodynamics, that how does it work? Unconsciousness is produced with the help of propofol, which can be used as primary hypnotic agent in the form of infusion to maintain unconsciousness. Then this drug also produces sedation, unconsciousness via potentiation of gabanergic inhibition within the cortex, thalamus, brainstem, and spinal cord. Antinociceptive agents also assist in maintaining unconsciousness. To maintain hemodynamic stability, we use different agents because these anesthetic agents can produce hypotension. So in order to maintain hemodynamic stability, we, we use Phenylephrine, which is symptomatic alpha adrenergic receptor activator, norepinephrine, uh, vasopressin, which acts through the vascular smooth muscle, and are, these are the agents which are commonly used. Then, antinociception is produced by a combination of drugs like remifentanil, ketamine, magnesium, dexmed and bupropion to produce this effect of antinociception. Remifentanil targets multiple classes of opioid receptors. Ketamine and magnesium are thought to decrease nociception in the periphery nervous system. Ketamine is an NMDA receptor antagonist, while magnesium plugs open an NMDA channels. Dexmed potentiates inhibitory interneurons that synapse onto the dorsal bone, and magnesium is used as a membrane stabilizer. Bupropion is a local anesthetic and works as antinociceptive agent with less established mechanism, but it is said that it causes sodium channel and blocking, which means sodium channel antagonist that causes localized inhibition of nociceptive signals. The primary hypnotic propofol contributes secondarily to antinociception by removing awareness of noxious stimuli throughout the procedure, suppressing nociceptive signals locally at the spinal cord and within the brain enables a more complete blockage of nociception. So how this immobility produced during anesthesia is again with the help of different muscle relaxants like rocuronium, vicuronium, etocurium, cisetocurium, and in the form of infusion we do in uh, TIVA, which is known as total intravenous anesthesia. Cisetocurium is used at the time of induction and also for the maintenance. Rocuronium is similarly used. Magnesium is a smooth muscle relaxant. Propofol is a central muscle relaxant and sevoflurane or other drugs like the other uh, uh, volatile anesthetic agents have got their muscle relaxant effect through the central muscle relaxation. So this is just one of the tables which is showing the effect of all these drugs that how are they produced and what are the name of different medicines. So in multimodal analgesia, we define it as a use of more than one pharmacological class of drugs which produces analgesia targeting different receptors along the pain pathway with the goal of improving analgesia while reducing individual class related side effects. A multimodal analgesic protocol should be surgery specific functioning more like a checklist than a recipe, with options to tailor to the individual patient. Elements of this protocol may include opioids, 
non-opioid systemic analgesic like acetaminophen, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, gabapentines, ketamine, and local anesthetics administered by infiltration, regional block, or the, through the intravenous route. The opioids sparing multimodal analgesic options are integral for optimal pain management in the perioperative period. Nevertheless, opioids still have a critical role in acute postoperative pain, especially for procedures where a primary regional neurexial or local infiltration is not possible. It offers strategies to mitigate the opioid-related side effects improve perioperative analgesia and reduce the incidence of cognitive dysfunction. So this is just one of the diagrams which shows that how is it going to help the nociceptive metabolic autonomic pathway. Then similarly, this is peripheral nerve block, local anesthetics, that how do they produce the effect because this is very important to know the pathways, but I'm not going to talk about it. Then, how do we practice this multimodal anesthetic technique in elderly patients who are undergoing different kind of surgical procedures using regional anesthesia? Geriatric patients typically suffer from a great number of comorbid diseases, have lower organ function, reserve and demonstrate and demonstrate altered physiologic and pharmacological reactions to anesthetic and analgesic medications. Perioperative regional anesthesia, analgesia as part of multimodal drug therapy may prove to be the most effective approach to perioperative pain management in the elderly. Cognitively impaired patients with comorbid diseases with the least amount of physiological compromise. Regional anesthesia may benefit older patients by reducing post-operative neurological, pulmonary, cardiac, and endocrine complications and potentially improve upon immediate post-op pain control. Then in thoracic surgery, this is again very important for the youngsters that people who undergo thoracotomy have a higher risk of post-op complications due to severe pain that typically develops after surgery. So what we do in this, that in these patients undergoing thoracic surgery, a multimodal analgesic approach consisting of use of COX-2, COX-3 inhibitors in combination with epidural analgesia, directly administered nerve block, produces better analgesia compared to epidural. But it's a combination of nerve block and epidural both, which is the best uh, technique for these patients in thoracotomy. In post-op nausea and vomiting, this is again, this modi uh, multimodal therapies are very important. There are two major concerns of the patient when they come for the surgery. Approaches for POMP and pain have been shown to improve treatment efficacy and reduce side effects for high-risk patients undergoing surgical procedures. A multimodal approach to PO and B should not be limited to drug therapy alone, but should involve a holistic approach starting before operation and continuing intraoperatively with risk reduction set strategies to which are added prophylactic antiemetics according to the assessed patient risk for PO and B. Again, this is a flow chart showing all that. And enhanced recovery after surgery, which is very important, is a multimodal perioperative care pathway to decrease mobility length of stay and promote faster post-operative recovery. So in ERAS, it's very important that the protocols are evidence-based, multimodal approach used to facilitate recovery after major surgical procedures in the pre-operative, intraoperative, and post-operative periods. Anesthesia management plays a key role in providing standardized care, achieving early recovery. Then these are the different approaches to improve surgical outcome because I've been asked that uh, the time is finishing, so I'm not going to the detour, detail. I'll just go through one uh, slide of multimodal intervention for early discharge from ICU. First stage of the multimodal intervention comes 
is a multifaceted hygiene improvement program, single round of environmental cleaning and disinfection involving the whole environment of ICU. This disinfectant solution applied to the walls, floors, doors, beds, mattresses, sinks, overhead tables, infusion, and suction pumps, stands, monitors, and ventilations, including connecting lines and other countertops of the drawers. In addition, all curtains within the bed should be exchanged with clean ones. So it's very important that how should you clean that and do that so that the, uh, your patient should be discharged from ICU at the earliest. Uh, Conclusion is that proper management of multimodal anesthesia requires a shift in the conceptual framework used to infer the anesthetic states and make decisions about the anesthetic technique and drug dosing. The anesthetic care providers must have a strategy of monitoring level of unconsciousness and for monitoring level of antinociception. This requires inferring a real time the state of antinociception, level of unconsciousness, and muscle relaxation. The practice move anesthesia caregiver away from one, dimension, one dimensional concept such as depth of anesthesia, MAC, and target controlled infusion. Now it's the use of multimodal general anesthesia that direct the anesthesiology towards more personalized anesthesia care. So this is one of the quotes that anesthesia is quite remarkable. It's lost time and wake up kind of refreshed. Thank you.